All right. Pa Patrick, thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, well, or it's a Martin Lechner. I'm CTO of Wikisuite. And uh, today, actually, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of a three-step presentation. First step will be introducing you to the Wikisuite SDK in general. You know, if you've never played around with the Wikisuite SDK before, if you don't know it, uh, that will be kind of the perfect introduction into the SDK and our tools, essentially. And then the uh, second and third part will be some uh, awesome announcement that we have to share with the developer community. So uh, if you've already used the Wikitude SDK, then there will be some great news for you. And also for the people who, don't, who haven't used it yet, uh, still great news for the addition to our platform. All right, so let's you know, jumpstart. Who is Wikitude in, in general? You know, what's, what's that company? Um, we are a, an augmented reality software technology provider based in Salzburg in Austria. And uh, essentially, you know, that says it already uh, in a way. We have uh, software tools for developers to use to create your own augmented reality experiences. Well, the classic augmented reality SDK as you love it so much. Um, in addition to that, we, um, well, we are around for six years now and uh, we have established quite a, a nice community using our tools. We have more than 50,000 developers actually that have registered, that have played around with our tools in a way. Uh, we have two, more than 2,000 augmented reality applications that have been published in the stores with our tools in more than 100 countries. So pretty much uh, global coverage here. And that's uh, really awesome and we are we're really happy to see that. Um, in addition to that, um, just to mention it briefly, uh, we are heavily involved in standardization activities for augmented reality. So um, the company and myself in particular, uh, we are um, behind the AR standard, ARML 2.0, that has been recently released. So if you're interested in that side topic, but I'm not gonna talk about that today. All right, so the Wikitude product suite, you know, what's, what tools do we offer when we are software technology providers? Well, uh, well the, the central component of our tool chain is the Wikitude SDK. That's kind of, you know, whatever we do, is somehow related to the Wikitude SDK to either uh, make the life, of, the life of developers easier or you know, to provide you some tools uh, to work with the SDK as such. But the Wikitude SDK is the centerpiece. In addition to that, we have some other tools like a Wikitude Studio, uh, which is our content management system for augmented reality. So essentially, you know, it's a web page, you log on to it, and you, with a simple drag and drop interface, you can create your augmented reality experiences, even without having to develop with the SDK. Um, so if you are not a, a developer, if you're kind of an, an agency or something like that, uh, you wanna look into that, uh, really helpful. We also have uh, the publishing app, which is called the Wikitude World Browser. So with the Wikitude SDK as such, you can build AR applications for yourself, but if you do not wanna do that, and if you wanna leverage the uh, publishing environment that we already have and the distribution where we have uh, several millions of users using the Wikitude app, then you can publish into this tool as well. And we have some um, tools that you know, ease out that development process. So uh, that's also an option that we have. And uh, well, there is something called cloud recognition, which is essentially you know, recognizing objects in the, uh, recognizing uh, two dimensional images in the cloud, uh, which obviously you know, gives you usually um, several hundreds of thousand different targets that you can recognize, um, and so on and so forth. So several tools around the Wikitude SDK that you can use kind of as, as an introduction. But again, uh, just to state that clearly the Wikitude SDK is the centerpiece and the most important um, product in our chain. The Wikitude SDK, uh, one of the benefits when you're using it is um, the Wikitude SDK is a cross-platform tool. So essentially, I'm not just talking about cross-platform for Android and iOS, so we have an SDK for Android and iOS, but the development interface that you get for the SDK is the same for both platforms, so you only develop once and then you can distribute it on both. We use JavaScript for that, more on that on the next slide. But essentially, you know, cross-platform, you write once, you run it everywhere, that's the beautiful statement that we all love. Um, but it's not just cross-platform, it's also cross-form factor, so we have several um, you know, form factors in augmented reality that are being used more or less. Um, you know, some of them hyped, some of them already quite established. But we have an SDK for both um, 
smartphones and tablets, kind of one SDK. We have an SDK for particular AR eyewear, like you know the Google Glass, Epson Overio, and so on and so forth, OptiInvent, um, and a couple of others. So you can you can check those out. And um, essentially, again, we have one SDK. You get one development interface that you code against, and then you can publish it on several platforms and several form factors. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you know write your code again. And we are also optimizing for particular chipsets. Also, uh, more on that later on. But just to, to emphasize that we are, you know, um, going down to the nuts and bolts of um, well of the platforms itself and trying to squeeze out everything that we get, um, optimizing for particular chipsets. All right. Um, now, talk about the, uh, talking about the development stack and the, the Wikitude SDK technology stack that uh, you can use as a developer. And this is as the Wikitude SDK stands right now. And I've added some blurry content here uh, that obviously gives an indication that there's something that we have to announce. More on that later. So, you know, just for now, there is a blurry box and we're going to talk about it in a second. But that's the technology stack uh, on the left-hand side of the slide um, as you get it when you download the SDK. Essentially, um, the Wikitude SDK, very important statement uh, from my side, right now is a high-level SDK. As I said already, you get a JavaScript interface that you can code against. So, you know, you essentially describe your scene using JavaScript. You declare the objects, you declare um, the, the visual representation of these objects, the location, stuff like that, their relationship, their spatial relationship uh, in between these things, everything using JavaScript. And then uh, below that is our Wikitude SDK that takes care of all the complex calculation and all the, you know, the mathematical backgrounds so that we you know, track objects and you know, do all these complex mathematical and uh, matrix manipulations um, well, that you know, make an augmented reality application. So we have two different engines right now in the SDK as it stands right now. One is the geo-based augmented reality engine, which obviously deals with the geospatial interface. So providing latitude and longitude to a, uh, to a couple of points and then it will show up at this particular location. I guess you are familiar with that. The second engine is uh, the 2D image recognition and tracking engine, which essentially, you know, um, well, does the computer vision part. And on top of that, there is a rendering engine and, well, that takes care of rendering. Uh, you guess what? But uh, everything is under the hood for you. So you don't have to deal with that as a developer. You get the JavaScript interface on top that communicates with these native layers and that's it um, for, for you. Okay, so that's the technology stack as it stands right now for Wikitude SDK 4.1 actually as it is right now available. And just you know, one slide on, on the coding side of things. Um, if you want to start right away and trying to get an understanding of how you describe these scenes and how you add interaction and things like that. Essentially, here are two very tiny little examples of what you would write in JavaScript to achieve what you want. Um, the first one is a geospatial uh, example. Here we are obviously in the city of London and we want to augment Big Ben. So um, here, you know, we provide a particular geolocation with latitude and longitude. I think this is not the coordinates in England, but uh, never mind. Um, you, you get the point. So you, you declare a geolocation, which obviously locates that object in the, in the real world, and then you define your visual asset that will go on top of this location. Here we are just describing, a, or we, we're just declaring a label, which reads my label, um, and well, you, you find a better scenario in your use case, I guess, but um, that's, you know, for now, just a text will appear. And then you match these two things, the geolocation and the label together. So it will show up in your experience. And this is uh, done using the geo object here, essentially. So you provide the geolocation and as drawable in the camera, you specify the label and that's it. These are the lines that you need, uh, not a lot more essentially. So you, all you have to do is you have to include our JavaScript library that gives you access to this AR namespace and you're covered. Not a lot to change if you want to use a uh, computer vision based scenario. So that's the, the second example here. So we have this um, surfer magazine and we want to augment it with you know, some additional content like a 3D model of this, um, of this, skateboard, uh, of this uh, surfboard. You do very similar things again. Instead of using um, a geolocation, you 
create something that we call the Wikitude target collection or WTC file. A WTC file essentially is a binary file that is pre-processed and includes all your targets that you ever want to scan in your scenario. So there can be uh, a lot of different targets in there. We allow a maximum of 1,000 targets on the device and all of these can be recognized essentially. So there is a pre-processing step available. Um, you know, there are several tools to create this WTC file on our website. Essentially you upload all your targets, you get this WTC file, you put it somewhere e either you know, in the local asset folder of your Android um, application or you put it on a server, whatever. It just has to be referenceable through a URL. As you see here, the ar.client tracker uh, is what it's called. Essentially you pass the URL to a WTC file and that's it. Then again, you declare the drawable. Here I have chosen a model instead of a text. So a 3D model, you know, um, there are several different representations, representation types that we support. Uh, I've chosen the model here. And then again, you stitch these guys together with a trackable 2D object. Essentially you pass again the WTC file, the collection of all the targets. Then with an ID, you uh, pick one particular target in this target collection. Well, obviously you can set these IDs uh, for your targets. And then in the draw, uh, as the uh, drawable in the cam, you specify the model that you have just created. And that's it. That's all the code that you need again for these examples. Okay, again, this is just very basic, uh, no interaction and stuff, but you know, just to give you an indication of um, you know, how you code for the Wikitude SDK. Okay, and uh, one last slide on uh, the Wikitude SDK as such. I've already mentioned a couple of things here. Right now, the Wikitude SDK in the store is a 2D natural feature tracking SDK. More on that later. And uh, there are a maximum of 1,000 targets that you can scan on the device without going to any server. So 1,000 targets can be recognized. As already mentioned, we also have cloud recognition. So our SDK is fully integrated with the uh, cloud recognition as such. Very similar to these examples, instead of using client tracker, you use cloud tracker and then you, know, you do the recognition in the cloud where you can scan a lot more than 1000 targets. And also what I've mentioned already is that we are optimizing for mobile chipsets. So uh, first of all, our SDKs are neon optimized. So obviously, you know, uh, most modern smartphones actually come with a neon processor and this helps a lot in um, you know, getting everything out of, um, of the platform itself. We're utilizing GPU mostly for rendering, also uh, GPU compute is a topic. And uh, we are also trying to, or I mean, we put an emphasis on running on low power devices. So you can go down to uh, something like the iPhone 4 and it will still run smoothly. Um, so you have lots of users covered if you use the Wikitude SDK, which you will. I hope. All right, so I've talked a lot about, you know, the current status of the Wikitude SDK on the website is this, uh, and as you download, it's this. So what's new with Wikitude? Now that's the second part, um, especially also for people who have already used the Wikitude SDK. First of all, good news on our side. Well, right now we have the Wikitude SDK 4.1, and we're going to Wikitude SDK 5.0 in, uh, on 21st of July, 2015. Cool, so new version of the SDK, what's in there? And there are some really awesome tools and new additions to the platform in this SDK. Again, I'm gonna start with the current status of the Wikitude SDK as you download it right now from the webpage is this. That's the, the technology stack kind of in a reordered way uh, to tell you a little bit more about you know, the options that you will get in Wikitude SDK 5. So as it stands right now, um, you have the native code below at the very bottom, you know, with the, with the geolocation engine, with the uh, computer vision and tracking engine, there's actually 2D um, and with the 2D cloud recognition engine. And then on top of that, there's the JavaScript API, which, you know, I've, I've showed you already. And then on top of that, you can create your own app. So you're using the JavaScript interface in SDK 4.1. In addition to that, we also support uh, the cross-platform development tools like Xamarin, like PhoneGap, uh, and Accelerator, essentially. Which, you know, since the Wikitude SDK is already a cross-platform uh, SDK and there are lots of development tools out there that allow this cross-platform development, well, it was a natural step for us to also support these, uh, these guys. So if you're used to developing a PhoneGap application, we have you covered as well with 
uh, the SDK for. And you can build your app on top of that. So now with uh, moving on to Wikitude SDK 5, what's new in this release? First step, and you see here this picture is actually, it looks like it's horribly misaligned. Uh, and the, the good news is, you know, we are adding some blocks here, so it will be, it will become a, a nice aligned picture here. First thing, Unity support. So uh, we listen to our developer community. I know that lots of people have demanded the request for, uh, or have demanded Unity support. And now with the SDK 5, we're gonna support this. So essentially, you know, to all the Unity developers out there, you will be able to develop in your very well uh, known environment. And we will create a plugin for that so that you can use your development environment in Unity and create an augmented reality SDK using the Wikitude, uh, <laughs> creating an augmented reality app using the Wikitude SDK. All right, first step. You know, there is some space on the uh, left side of the slide actually, so we're gonna fill that one. Second step, second addition to the Wikitude SDK 5 is a low level API. Again, we have listened to uh, the developer community, especially to the gamers and to, you know, the guys doing some crazy stuff on the rendering side. They said, it's great that you have a JavaScript interface, but it's just not enough for my use case. I need something more low level. I need control about, you know, I have my own rendering engine that I'm using or I, you know, whatever. I need something more. So we have created the low level API, which means that you will now be able to, you know, get rid of this JavaScript part uh, and code in Android and in iOS. Essentially, of course, that means you will lose the benefit of being cross-platform, but I mean, that's, you know, kind of, you know, that's the, the price you have to pay if you want to go low level, uh, but obviously you have a lot more uh, to, you know, to control and uh, to use your own tools, essentially. So, essentially there will be a, um, an Android and iOS API that you can use to create your app uh, just using Android and iOS without the, uh, the JavaScript layer. All right, and there is uh, still some space on the right side of the slide which is uh, dedicated to the Wikitude plugin framework. So, you know, we, we got lots of requests again from developers saying, you know, I want to do face recognition or I want to do OCR or I want to do something else that you have covered in your use case. And the natural feature tracking doesn't really work quite well. There are different algorithms to achieve what I want. You don't support that. So what should we gonna do about that? we have the plugin, SDK, the, the plugin framework ready for you. So this uh, is, we understood that there are lots of other guys out there which do one particular use case very well and we don't wanna copy them. So that's why we're gonna open up our SDK in a way that you can access the camera frame in the same way we access the camera frame and then you can you know, provide it to the plugin SDK of your choice like a face tracking plugin or an OCR plugin or whatever and do your own stuff. And that's the plugin SDK essentially, that's the, the goal. So you can use different libraries and you can run them simultaneously to the Wikitude SDK tracking. You can use them but basically all together at the same time. And obviously, I mean, there's, um, there's a lot we anticipate with this uh, plugin idea. Essentially, you know, there could be at some point a, a marketplace where people that have created some awesome tools can put them into the marketplace, maybe resell, um, and you know, they're gonna, we're gonna sell it together with the Wikitude SDK, stuff like that. That's gonna be step two. First step is we're gonna open it up and we are looking forward to seeing uh, lots of uh, pl plugins essentially for the Wikitude SDK coming up. Um, well, to do more than just, just feature tracking. All right, so much for this slide. And uh, there's, in addition to that, there are some other, uh, let's say, smaller additions to the platform, which are essentially also worth mentioning. On the left side here, uh, these are the things that I have already covered. On the right side, um, here are some additions to the platform that are also under the hood. One is extended image tracking support, which essentially means that when you're losing the target, um, in a 2D scenario, for example, if you're looking up a 3D model and the target is not anymore in the field of vision, then previously you just lost the tracking because the target was gone, so the platform or the, the SDK didn't know what to track anymore. With extended tracking, this is solved. Essentially, the tracking will continue even though the target is not anymore in the field of vision, which gives a, more, a, a smoother and uh, more natural user interface also for 2D tracking. 
We will also add Android Studio to SDK 5. Um, you know, Android has recently, um, well, has changed from uh, an Eclipse-based version to Android Studio in their development tool. And we're gonna support this now. And we're also gonna support 60 frames per second rendering, which, uh, well, we didn't believe, but it's really, really, really a great addition to, uh, an, well, an improvement to the user experience, essentially, when uh, we are rendering 60 frames per second, even though, you know, we always thought that 30 frames per second uh, could be enough. 60 frames per second makes a big difference. So that's actually a really great to see this change and this uh, addition. Try it out, you will be amazed. All right, so another horribly misaligned slide that you've seen already. Um, there is the SDK 4 and we're gonna move to SDK 5, cool. But there's also a second announcement that we can uh, make and if you followed the news already then uh, this is something that you might be familiar with already. Right now, the Wikitude SDK is a 2D tracking engine, natural feature tracking, and uh, we are soon gonna move to a 3D tracking engine. Or essentially not move, but add uh, a 3D tracking engine. Which means that you will be able to scan objects. You will be able to scan entire rooms um, and you know, do whatever you want, go crazy with, uh, with this new addition. Is that me? Sorry if it's me, I don't know what I changed. But. All right. Um, and so this, this announcement uh, is, for us is, is really, really important because obviously you know, it, it, it changes, it adds lots of use cases that we will be able to support with the Wikitude SDK. Not just 2D flat tracking, but also going a bit broader, going more into the natural spaces here. And this release is gonna happen in September 2015, so also just a couple of months out. So it uh, will be really interesting to hear from you guys what you think uh, once you tried that and you know, push the platform to the limits, what you think, um, what we achieved with the 3D tracking SDK. We are confident that uh, it's really a lot and it's a, an awesome, awesome addition to our platform. So big news actually in 2015 for us, there's uh, a lot to come up. Uh, coming back to this 3D recognition, 3D tracking, SLAM-based visual tracking, essentially how we uh, call it. Um, I already mentioned that it's not, you know, we're not gonna move from 2D to 3D, we're gonna add 3D. So you will still be able to do the 2D tracking if you want to. And um, essentially, you know, I already said that uh, there are no restrictions in kind of where to use that. We really put an emphasis on not just being able to track in a, in a small scale environment, but also in a large scale environment. So not just tracking one particular object like uh, a laptop on a table, but also this entire room and trying to understand where we are. Um, we also put an emphasis on indoor and outdoor tracking. So um, we are you know, essentially considering both use cases here. And if you've played around with 3D tracking already, you might know that it's really a big difference if you go indoors or outdoors because indoors is usually kind of a controlled environment, usually always kind of the same light. Outdoors is totally different. I mean, for example, in Salzburg, you know, it rains a lot, you know, it snows a lot, um, and so it constantly changes the environment, right? Uh, so there might be reflections because of the rain, there might be uh, a building being snow covered. So we're kind of still trying to uh, be able to put everything out of the, the platform here and still be able to track, even though the environment is changing a lot. And so, these are kind of the, the focus areas that we have. And in addition to that, uh, since we're going outdoors, you know, usually you're not, uh, you're not in, an, in an environment which is easy to track, usually. You know, there is not a, a really nice textured 2D poster that you are tracking, you're just standing in front of a house. And, you know, it's usually low textured, repetitive patterns, uh, like windows and stuff. So um, this is a particularly, a particularly hard scenario to track, and we put an emphasis on that to also allow tracking in these scenarios. So um, we've worked quite a lot uh, on this extension to the platform uh, already for a couple of months and we're gonna be uh, really, really happy to see the addition of this um, tool to the platform. Okay, and to give you kind of a, you know, to let your creativity go wild, as we like to say, essentially, uh, I'm gonna show you a quick video uh, d demonstrating a couple of use cases that you will be able to do um, when we talk about 2D tracking. Can you switch the audio to? Okay. Ah, sorry. The 
here, for example, that's uh, an architecture use case where you want to, you know, you're standing in front of a, an open space where there could be a house, your house in the future, and you're just checking out um, how the house might look. Or there's some entertainment, some games. Here again, outdoor, scanning an, an entire scene and putting some objects in there and playing with it. Here with the VR one. And the third use case is kind of an, an indoor navigation use case where uh, you're walking around in, in a particular store or in an airport or something like that. And you get deals, things like that. Here's some, you know, some little scenes from the office home, essentially, a couple of people. The guys working on making this SDK reality for you guys. All right, so essentially this 3D tracking, you know, um, if you have ever heard of SLAM-based tracking, if you've ever heard of uh, sensor fusion, all of these things are actually in this SDK. And as I said, uh, we will all be very, very keen to hear what you guys think about this addition to the platform. We believe it's awesome. All right, and since I already got the five minutes warning, um, that's the last slide, so good news on that side. A uh, couple of things, where can you get started? Uh, you know, if you're now really interested in the Wikitude SDK, I'm sure you are. Um, the, well, the top level domain is www.wikitude.com. So you wanna uh, check out all the news, you know, there's a blog, uh, stuff like that. If you want to download, the SDK slash download is your friend. Essentially, uh, we have a couple of price points, you know, depending on what you need uh, in terms of what scenarios you actually uh, want to achieve the different SDKs for you. Um, but good news is if you want to try the Wikitude SDK, it's totally free. And it's a 100% complete, feature complete version, so no restrictions on that. Uh, the only restriction is you're not allowed to publish. So um, when you want to publish something, then we're gonna talk. Um, but you know, that's, that's the Wikitude SDK trial, so feel free to download it and try it out. Um, especially for this conference, since you know we like it so much, uh, and I guess you all uh, like it as well, there's a 10% discount on any of our products when you use the AWE 2015 product code in our store, slash store is your friend, um, if you want to publish something. Um, and this offer is gonna run until end of July. So you still have some time to try it out and then essentially uh, decide to stay with Wikitude. Also, the Wikitude Studio is free for you to use. Slash Studio is, um, well, is the path. And essentially, you know, again here, free to use uh, up to a certain limit of targets that you uh, can augment. And then, um, you know, once you go past that limit, then, uh, well, there's a license on that as well. And if you want to stay tuned on the SDK tracking for uh, up until September before we release it, then uh, Slash Slam is, uh, is the path with lots of videos, lots of uh, additional information on the product itself. And, well, you know, check it out. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Martin. Uh, we'll now open up for questions. If anyone has a question, uh, um, Anne will give you the mic and you can ask your question. You want to give the mic to the gentleman in the back? So uh, is the 3D tracking going to be in your version 5? No, because the SDK 5 is going to be released on 21st of July, okay. and the 3D uh, version is going to release going to be released in September. So there's Okay, late September or <laughs> <laughs> September. <laughs> Thanks. moving the mic, I actually had a question on the slam. Um, you said it's, uh, y it'll do, does it, the environment, you can pre, pre uh, scan, how big are the, like how big an area can you scan? And well, we tried it in, in rooms like this. Uh, so there is, uh, there are a couple of videos on our website. Rooms like this, um, there is a church just in front of our office which is like 
100 meet, that's 300 feet approximately, I think. So 300 feet uh, wide building, and we are still able to track this and put some staples on, uh, on the church towers which have been destroyed during Second World War. So um, areas like this will be able to be scanned. And will it be um, both real time, like on device, as well as pre canned like I can scan an area and yeah. recognize it later? Exactly. So uh, essentially, we will provide a tool to pre scan that area and put some augmentations in there. Of course, you will also be able to, since it's SLAM, uh, to track the environment automatically. But then uh, there will be some kind of a, a marker that you place somewhere so you know where uh, the object actually should be placed. But essentially, that the important use case is scanning before and then okay. um, putting some additional. Sorry, I'm hogging all the questions. Well, ask, it'll <laughs> also be in the Unity version, the SLAM? Um, well, it'll only be the not in the first version. Uh, it, it will be just on the low level SDK. Okay, sorry. Now the mic. <laughs> yeah, another 3D question. Um, have you tried scanning anything on an alpha channel? or Because uh, we use a lot of learning objects in the classroom, mm -hmm. and we need to have objects that we would just scan that could appear in any environment and be read. Okay, uh, so you mean like an, like an object, wherever it is placed, it should be, uh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, this will be possible. Uh, it depends a lot on how you record that object that is kind of your trigger. Uh, because if it's like a white wall behind and you're just scanning that object and you uh, really take uh, well, a good feature map of that, then it will work. If there is like, uh, if you put an object right in this building where there are lots of distracting feature points, uh, then the algorithm might have troubles. But um, yeah, this will work. Um, yeah, it, will the will the slam data be editable so that we could take it and clean it up? Sorry, so, I, I didn't like get for it. instance, if you scan something on a on a really noisy background, ah, can okay. we open that data up in something and clean it up like something, like Maya? Yeah, understand. Um, so we are definitely looking into this. Uh, I I can understand that uh, that use case. It will not be part of the September release. I'm I'm pretty confident to say, uh, but it's definitely something that we're looking into. Yeah. I have a follow-up question on the three. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you? Will it? Will you guys? Uh, maybe not with this release. Have you been looking at things like Tango and, and Prime Sense and or, or not Prime Sense, but uh, was it Structure Sense or those like three, something that gives you a depth channel? Yeah. Um, of course, we're looking into this. Uh, we know a couple of guys from these projects, uh, and we are in you know in, in information exchange mode, I'd say. But uh, the important thing for us uh, to state is that this is not a requirement for our 3D tracking engine. So we can run on a regular camera. If it has a gyroscope, uh, we can do sensor fusion even better, but it will even run on just a plain camera, so. Right. Will it also run with depth information or not? Uh, it definitely will then. Okay. So once, once we have you know, a, a version for this for, let's say, Tango or some other devices, then definitely yes. We can make good use of that. Sweet. Any other questions? Oh, one. Oh. Sorry, just a couple follow-up questions. Um, so did you scan this church from a, uh, a, a normal mobile device, or did you use something specialized? That's my first question. Well, this is a marketing slide here. Okay. So this is not, this is not how okay. it will look. Um, it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so essentially, no, wh when we did the use case, uh, please, I don't have the video with me okay. uh, right now, but on our webpage slash slam, you will find it. Yeah. Uh, here we really just used a plain camera. You will even see uh, when we record the, the church. It was just a regular, mm. I think S5 or something like that, or even a tablet or something like that, okay. but nothing else. Um, this, no, you I will see. not see okay. that. <laughs> and then I, I guess this, the picture made me ask this question, and maybe it's a moot point, but um, it looks like it's more like edge detection as, a po as opposed to like point clouds or something like that. Just kind of curious how that works. Um, so the solution that we took without going into too much detail, because it's kind of a secret sauce, uh, is um, you know, it's feature-based. We also use edges. We also use sensor fusion. So it's kind of a, um, well, a, a fusion of lots of different algorithms uh, to be as robust as I promised you uh, to be. So for low texture environments, obviously feature points don't really work quite well. So there's some other things that you have to consider. Three, so uh, I can ask that question. 360, 360 panoramas, uh, can we make use of that? 
Um, we do not have a particular, um, well, th there is no for or against 360 panoramas. For us, uh, it depends on the camera that is on the device. Um, and you know, if it's running Android, then we can try it. We don't have a dedicated version for that. Are you talking about viewing them or creating viewing them? them like mm. the yeah, so they it's kind of, yeah, exactly, like uh, holding up a stick and then it should work in a way, right? He's saying, view, can you view 360 panoramas just using oh. like the gyro and the and the uh, oh. compass? Oh, okay. So that's that's a different story. You will be able to do that with the low-level SDK, actually, not with the JavaScript SDK, but with the low-level SDK, you will be able to do it because you can render whatever you want in your own rendering engine. So. And if you're using Unity, there's plenty of scripts out there that yeah. will do that for you. You know, just tracking the gyro. Okay, if that's all the rest of the questions, thank you, Martin. Let's give him a hand. Thank you.